hello students a very warm welcome to you all so we are going to discuss what iupsc nomenclature and that to jee main pattern exercise so you need to have a good logic you need to have a good knowledge of the preference order that we choose so let us just start our exercise with question number 1 so what does it say the iupsc name of the neopentane so first of all you need to know what neopentane is and you need to find out what you need to find out its iupsc name neopentane is just a common name to it so that means pentane and what is neopentane so let us just draw the structure i hope everybody knows the structure here so it is this so let me just complete the hydrogens so that is neopentane you need to have a proper iupsc name to it so how will you give it you can choose either of the word roots like this one this one or maybe this ways or that ways so it could be any way it to will be the same iupsc name every time so let us just have the iupsc name 1 2 3 that means on to the second carbon i have got two methyls what will it be 2 2 dimethyl and we have got a chain of a word root of 3 carbons that is propane so 2 2 dimethyl propane is the answer so do we have a similar option 2 2 dimethyl propane yes so we have got it so the answer is b over here now let's just move on to the very next question what does it say okay now it is asking about the preference order so what would be the preference order here in this case the correct decreasing order of priority so i need starting from the highest to the lowest for the functional groups they are asking so just mark out the keywords in the question every time in order to have a simplification so organic compounds in the iupsc system of nomenclature is so as we all know carboxylic acids are always on the higher priority so we get our answer over here which is this but let us just check whether the other or the consecutive functional groups are are properly managed or not so it is sulfonic acid what is this this is amide and aldehyde definitely yes this is always our preference order i have checked so basically you do not have to go for a logic over here you just need to have a proper knowledge of the preference order so that is what you need here in this question i've got my answer as a so i hope everybody has got it let's just now move on to the next question what do we have in the next a very very interesting question they have given the bond line formula and you need to have an iupsc name name to it so either you can go for proper formation of a structural from formula from this bond line formula or you just need to mark out a proper word root here itself so either of the ways you can go so i'll be first drawing the structural formula to make it easy for you so it would be this so just draw with me simultaneously in order to have a proper idea i've got ch3 i'm starting off from here ch3 then ch2 then finally again ch2 and what else do i have here i've got a carbon two methyls attached so a carbon two methyls attached what else do i have the consecutive chain i've got it would be ch again now this time i've got an ethyl ch2 ch3 and what else do i have the remaining ch2 and ch3 so that is what they are depicting in the bond line formula so again i need to choose the word root out and then finally assign the iupsc name to it so how i'm going to choose the word root either from this side or from this very side so which would be the correct way it would be when i'll be assigning the lowest number to these substituents attached so i'll be choosing this very side so it would be 1 2 3 4 that means 3 and 4 is given to the substituents if i go from left to right 1 2 3 4 5 so 4 and 5 set i'm getting that means this ways is incorrect left to right is incorrect i'll be going from right to left 
So I hope everybody has got the idea. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. That means I need to have 3 ethyl, 4, 4 dimethyl. So methyl and ethyl, I'll be choosing ethyl as per the alphabetical order. So it would be 3 ethyl. <coughs> And finally what? 4, 4 dimethyl. Just remember that D is not included in the alphabetical order but the name of the compound itself. So dimethyl. And what else do I need? It is a chain of 7 that means heptene. So I've got it. So let us just try to match our answer from any of the options. It's 3 ethyl, 4, 4 dimethyl. Can you see anywhere 3 ethyl 4 4 dimethyl heptane? So that is our answer. So I hope everybody has got it. You do not need to analyze the options over here. Just go for the IUPC name directly. Now let's move on to the next very question. I hope everybody is liking it. It's so simple. IUPC name have always been a simple task. But you need to have proper knowledge of the rules what is involved in it. So, the IUPAC name of the compound shown below is, now there is a ring like structure. So, you need to have a proper care over. So, I have got a chlorine here, I have got a bromine here. Both are substituents. So, on the basis of alphabetical order, I may be going for bromine. But if you know the preference order, what is the preference order? Functional group is always preferred over double or triple bonds. And finally, then there comes the turn of substituents. That means, I will be giving the double bond as the priority and not the substituents. That means what? I will be giving 1 to this, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Not the other way around. I hope everybody is getting me out. So, it would be on to the first carbon that I will attach in. So, if you look at the options, I have got one in, hexene, again hexene. That means one is in each and every option. I need to find out how they have assigned the numbers to the substituents here. So, I have got one chloro, I have got three bromo. So, definitely three bromo will be coming first. After that, it would be one chloro on the basis of alphabetical order. So, I think this option is very correct. 3 bromo, 1 chloro as per the alphabetical order. Finally, cyclohexane. I need to have what? A prefix over here. That too. What kind of a prefix? That too. A secondary prefix. Which is what? Which is cyclo over here. That means I've got my answer. 3 bromo, 1 chloro, cyclohexane is the answer. Or you can also write it as hex 1 in that will also be correct so it can also be hex 1 in so i hope everybody has got the answer right now let's move on to the very next question what does it say so the next question here says okay again we need to assign the iupsc name so the IUPAC name of the compound is, so this particular compound has been given again a cyclic compound and as per the order, if you see there are two methyl groups attached. So every time if you are finding confusion to analyze the bond line formula, just try to put the type of groups which are present over. So CH3, CH3 that means two methyls are present and as per the preference order, again I am saying the functional group will be on the higher side as compared to the substituents which are attached. So I will be naming 1 to that carbon which is directly attached with the functional group 1 and the lowest possible number to the substituents. That means I am not going clockwise but I am going anti-clockwise in order to have the lowest number, lowest priority to these very substituents attached. So that is how we are going to proceed. It would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. I hope everybody is getting me out. So it would be 3, 3 dimethyl definitely. So I have got two options over here saying the same thing. And on to the first I have got all. Also what? Also a cyclic ring. So it would be 3, 3 dimethyl 
one cyclohexanol definitely that will be our answer why because why we haven't mentioned one hydroxy can you just tell me we haven't mentioned one hydroxy because whenever i am numbering that carbon as one which is attached directly to the non terminating over here this very group is non terminating that means what in order to have it in the suffix part it should be this carbon which is directly attached to this non terminating group should be on the number 1 that means i do not need to mention it as a substituent then but as a suffix over here so i hope everybody is getting me oh will be represented as the suffix and not the substituent so it will not be one hydroxy but one cyclohexanol or i can say cyclohexane one all can also be the answer so i hope everybody has got me out c is the answer over here so let's just move on to the next question so this was a tricky question because the two options were somewhat similar you just need to have a proper knowledge of it now let's move on to the next very question the iupac name of this very compound so you have got the compound again you need to expand the structure to have a proper easy iupac naming it is a keto group which is there ch and then attached with two methyls so how you are going to number it that is the question so again i am saying you need to number one or i can say you need to have the lowest priority to what not the substituents over here but the functional group so what is the functional group over here it is the keto group so it will be 1 2 3 and 4 so the answer would be 3 methyl so just mind it over here i am not mentioning this two as my substituent i won't be mentioning two keto but i'll be mentioning this as in the suffix part not the substituent so this would be the suffix included in the suffix not the substituent so you need to have a proper clarity about the concept so 3 methyl it would be 4 that means but but 2 or i can say butane 2 on or it could have been 3 methyl this is also correct 2 butane on so that is also correct so can you find any resembling option over here 3 methyl 2 butane on yes definitely i've got it over here it will not be 2 methyl 3 butanone because i need to have a priority always to the functional group that means the lowest possible number to this functional group so here i have got the lowest possible rather than assigning the lowest possible to my substituent so that would be our perfect answer i hope everybody has got the answer over here so now let's just move on what does the next question say again the iupac name of the following compound i need to have a proper iupac name now that's a very typical question over here i've got an aromatic ring i will be assigning a number 1 to what so if you see over here i've got a cyano group i've got a oh so the nitrile group always is on the higher priority nitrile is always on the higher priority now you need to move on to the another functional group that would be the possible way but if you see if i move anti clockwise this bromine will be assigned as the lowest possible number so instead of moving on to that direction i'll be moving on to this bromine direction that means here i'll be giving one to this cyano group 2 3 4 5 and 6 so that is how we are going to number here in this case so can you find anything related to 2 bromo i've got 2 bromo where here i've got 2 bromo and definitely 5 hydroxy because here two kinds of functional groups are present and i am assigning number 1 to which functional group this that means this will definitely be treated as a substituent so 
So this will definitely be treated as a substituent that means 5 hydroxy, 5 hydroxy, 5 hydroxy and benzo finally nitrile that means what suffix of CN the cyano group here. If this CN would have been present in the substituent part, I would have named it as cyano. That means this very particular thing, cyano over here. But here it is present as the main functional group. Then it would be included in the suffix part having the nitrile, having the proper name for the suffix. That is the nitrile for CN group. So it would be 2 bromo. 5-hydroxy benzonitrile is the answer. I hope everybody has got the point over here. So I haven't moved on to the direction of the OH but to the direction of the bromine in order to make it assign what? Assign the least possible number because here both the things if you see bromine as well as OH both are treated as substituents. So these are two substituents I need to have the least possible number. So what is the least possible set of numbers? Will it be this ways? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I've got 3 and 6 as 1 and 2 and 5. So for the substituents, which is the lowest possible set? That is the lowest possible set. If this would have been the main functional group, so I would have assigned what? I would have assigned the least possible number. But here I am choosing this, this set of locants. So I hope everybody has got it. It is a slightly typical question, so you need to have a proper knowledge about it. So now let's move on to the next very question. What do I have? So in the next question, what it says is, now again a very good question here. The IUPAC name of the compound this. So they are asking about the IUPAC name. I have got the compound here. It is this. What is this function group? This is acid chloride. So we all know that this is class of acid chlorides. And what is this? This very group, we mention it as oil chloride. We mention it as oil. So if you look at the options here, what are the options? Benzoyl chloride, benzene chloroketone. So ketone will not be the answer because here we are considering COCl as the whole functional group and not particularly the keto. So we are not considering this. Benzene carbonyl chloride, there may be a possibility of this option. Why? Because here there is the carbonyl group present over here. So we could have mentioned it as carbonyl. Chlorophenyl ketone, again ketone is not a possibility. So I've got benzoyl chloride and benzene carbonyl chloride. So if you are thinking of this very name, that is the benzoyl chloride, that is the correct name for this compound. This is nothing but the benzoyl chloride. But what is the problem in this name? This name is actually not the IUPAC name, but the common name of the compound. So that is the common name. So you need to be very careful while actually choosing the options. So this is the common name. How do I assign the IUPAC name? It would be benzene carbonyl chloride because here it's a carbonyl separately mentioned and a chloride separately mentioned. So that would be our answer here in this case and not the benzoyl chloride. So I hope everybody has got it. So just be careful while choosing the names. They may have mentioned the common names in between which can confuse you. So now let's move on to the next question. What do we have in the next question? Okay, again the IUPAC name I need to assign. So what do I have? Let's just expand the structure. It's, it's having a double bond. So that is what we need to have. Now again, I need to have a priority. So double bond is always on the priority, then the substituents attached. So I can have a word root like this or like that ways. Any way would be correct. So here, I'm counting it as from left to right 
because here the double bond will be assigned the least possible number. So, it would be 1, 2, 3 and 4. That means on to the third what I have got? 3 methyl and what else? I have got 4, 4 carbon atoms that means but. So, it would be 1 butene or I can write it as 3 methyl but 1 in. So, either of the ways could be correct. So, let us just find our option here. So, it would be 3 methyl but 1 in, 3 methyl 1 butene. Again, it is a correct one. So, I hope everybody has got it. It is very, very simple. Just assign the priorities. Now, let us move on to the next very question. What do I have? The last question of this questionnaire. The IUPAC name of the compound, again I need to assign the IUPAC name and it is a, again a pretty simple question. What do I need to do? So, it is 1, 2, 3 and 4. Again a similar kind as we have discussed previously. So, it is 3, 3 dimethyl what? But 1 in. That is the correct option. I hope everybody has got the answer here and the types that we have discussed, you need to have a proper priorities, you need to have a proper preference order for that. So, I hope you have liked the questionnaire and you need to practice more and more questions from IUPAC naming because you need to have a good practice out of it. So, I will be back with the next questionnaire round in the next session. Till then, have a good day.